Hi, my friends, it's Sam Via here. On behalf of Salon Centric, welcome to my home. It's not my living room. I'm actually in my small little studio, and I'm so excited to have an opportunity to share something with you today. And also, I want to kind of keep it more towards basically what we're going through in terms of, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, gosh, how am I going to cut hair if or I choose to wear gloves? So I want to be able to talk about that and uh, give you some helpful hints that are going to help you in regards to cutting with um, gloves, if that's something that you choose or something that's a mandate. So let's talk about that. I also want to have got some little hot tips because think about it. If you are going to be working with gloves, then I think you have to understand when you apply product, what's that going to feel like? So let's go through and let's just talk, begin while I'm waiting for people to come on. Let's talk about what's life going to be back like when you get back to the salon and you're actually cutting hair. Okay, let's just say that number one, it's going to be different. I think we all know that it's going to be different. Depending upon how you choose to work, I know a lot of people are asking clients to come in with their hair dry and they're going to dry cut. Uh, if you're going to shampoo, you're going to cut, maybe you're going to blow dry, maybe you're going to choose not to. I want to talk about those options. Now, first of all, I want to say that I'm not here to say what's right, not here to say what's wrong. I want to just give you some ideas and just inspire you maybe to approach a particular haircut a different way. I also want to approach some problems and solutions because let's face it, a lot of people have been growing their hair out. So because they've been growing their hair out, there's maybe they're going to find, oh, Sam, I like the length. I want to keep the length. Or they might say, Sam, I like that my layers have gotten longer on top, but I still want to get some volume. How can I maximize my volume? So what I want you to do is imagine a bullseye. All right, if you imagine a bullseye, the circle in the bullseye that I want you to know is needs. I want you to hit the bullseye. So what are their needs in regards to their hair? <laughs> then outside of that is value, okay? So if you imagine a circle of a bullseye, there's five circles to it. The middle circle is need. Outside of that, now I'm gonna do a haircut in a moment. Outside of that is value. The next circle outside of that is problems and solutions. The next side outside of that is symptoms. And then it's spinning. So when your clients come in, I want you to think about something. Their head's going to be spinning. They're going to have anxiety. So you really need to have some protocol where you set them up before they come in. I highly recommend virtual consultations. I think that's important so that you get the consultation out of the way. And then when they get there, you're immediately able to go to work rather than spending 10, 15 minutes because you know what's going to happen, my friends. If you don't have that consultation, they could sit there for 10, 15 minutes telling you what their life's been about the last 30, 60, whatever days it is. And then you want to talk about their hair. By the time you're ready to get going, it's 15 minutes into your appointment time. I want you to remember, time is going to be an issue when we get back to the salon, when you get back to the salon. So what I want to help you with is kind of getting that time. So that's that spinning side of the circle. Now, the next, next part of that bullseye is uh, spinning is um, symptoms. And the symptoms that you're going to have or they're going to have, what are those symptoms? Number one, make sure you've armed yourself with some new communication skills. Let's face it, guys. You're going to be navigating yourself behind that chair. Your communication skills are going to be able, you're going to have to change them in terms of how, what you're communicating, how you're communicating. And I'll talk about that as I'm doing a haircut for you. Next inside that circle is we talk spinning. We've talked about uh, the symptoms, or sp spinning symptoms. The next thing is value, excuse me, is problems and solutions. Find out what the problem is in terms of what they're having with their hair. Have the solution and now add value to that. And value basically is the education side. Maybe there's a lot of things that you've learned. Then inside of that, next inside of that problem solution is the bullseye. That's the need. Focus on hitting that bullseye every time with that client. What's the need? What's the need? What's the need? The need will have come from value and it'll come from problems and solutions. Try to stay outside that bullseye, which is the, sim, uh, the spinning, that conversation keeps spinning, and the symptoms. So let's get started. Let's do a haircut for you, and I'm going to talk to you about what I'm going to do. So I'm going to suggest this, though. Uh, remember, I'm not here to say what's right, not here to say what's wrong. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an inventor. I'm not a genius. I'm proud to be a hairdresser who's a teacher. So let's talk about what I'm going to recommend and suggest. Remember, I've talked about how time, we know that the revenue is not going to be the same, but your tips are going to go up. 
So it's because you're not going to be able to maybe double book, triple book, whatever it is that you do. It's going to change based upon what you're going to be choosing to do, what's socially right for your environment, for your salon. So a suggestion would be, and I know a salon that's done this and it's working really well for them, to save time and so that they're not blow drying the hair because there's some concerns people are asking me about, Sam, am I going to be blow drying? I don't know. What's socially right from your environment? What's mandated by your state? What's mandated by the state uh, board in that particular state? But some salons are choosing not to blow dry. So they're asking their salon, their clients to come with their hair dry. But what's cool is what they did was every stylist needed to send that particular client a blow dry video on how to blow dry it. Whether they explained it and just dem demonstrated it for maybe five, seven minutes and they send the blow dry to the client. So the client comes in with their hair blow dried, which I thought was pretty cool. Once again, what it does is it saves time. Now I'm gonna be bending in to see if there's questions at any given time. So that, I thought that was pretty cool. So the idea of maybe blow, having them come in and blow dried. So when it's blow dried, it's so cool because you can really see where there's weight. You can feel it. You can see like, like this, for example, here's a client, watch this. She actually went in, this girl here, and she actually, Cut her fringe herself. Look at that. She started kind of picking up the scissors and going at. Then she gave up. And these are the things that you're probably going to be seeing. These clients coming in and going, I did, that, I did this, I did that, I tried to do that, and it didn't work. Now you need to fix it. That's why you're the expert. So let's set up a scenario. She came in. She started to kind of cut a little fringe herself. Then she gave up. But she's grown out her layers, you know, maybe this was a mannequin I layered a while back and I thought I'm going to create a scenario where they come in and they've had a previous haircut. So she likes it, but she says, you know what, I like my hair longer now, Sam, and I still want my volume and I want my layers, but I don't want my layers as short as they were last time. So you can see it was probably, you know, half an inch a month. That's, it was probably about right here based upon where we're at in today's world. So. What are we gonna do? Let's create something that just gets them started in terms of them getting back into enjoying their hair again. What I'm gonna recommend is probably now that first visit is not the opportunity or time to really change the look. What I want you to do is focus on getting them by and getting them to, oh, I love my hair, I'm relaxed, that anxiety is gone, basically on just the simple things that you do. All right, so let's do this. Let's start from a middle part. Now I'm gonna start from a middle part because I'm gonna layer this top out. And I've discovered if I start from a middle part and then I approach which direction they take this side to side, it works out a lot better in terms of evening my graduation out on top, all right? So we're gonna go with a middle part, okay? And I, I pre-blow pre dried this and then I used, what I used was I used my, uh, my favorite blow dry product, which is obviously my Redken Pillow Proof I love this primer. Make sure you shake it up. It speeds up the process of blow drying. So if you are gonna blow dry, time, as I said, is gonna be an issue. So you can get clients in. You're only gonna be able to service so many clients. I don't know, but you think about that. What's socially right for your salon? So this is one of my favorites. It speeds up the process of blow drying, which is gonna be important, and the conditioning benefits. I love it, okay? Then what I also love is I'll apply some of this in terms of if I'm gonna go in and be using a flat iron or whatever, this is also play safe, 450. I love this because it comes from the extreme category, especially for hair that's really been uh, compromised by a lot of heat and thermal tools, okay? Now once I've got my blow dry, I come back in now. Let's talk about dry cutting for a moment. Dry cutting is a visual exercise for the hairdresser. It is not a benefit for the client. It's a benefit for me. What do you mean, Sam? Because when the hair is dry, I can see everything that I've cut in terms of the lines, the layers, uh, in terms of blonde hair. You know blonde hair. When we cut blonde hair, we can really see those lines. So what I want to do is, by cutting dry, it allows me to really go through and get that edge the way that I want it in terms of the degree of softness. So it's a visual exercise. That's what I mean by it is a visual exercise. Now once I've got this separated, you can see what I just did. I separated that front to back. That's all I simply did was separate that front to back. Okay, I'm gonna bring it a little higher for you. Okay, now once I've done that, then what I wanna do is I wanna circle out this back crown area here. Okay, not the top area. This season, just go after the crown. Now watch how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna place my comb so that, give you a back view of that. Here's where my line comes up to the top, 
place my comb so it comes off, finger slides there, look where the comb comes off here. Now that is exactly where I'm going to start this curvature line. So this is telling me there's a point of reference where this changes, right there, okay? And this is a great little cut to do, especially for, for haircut that's fine, hair that's fine. If they have fine density, fine texture, this is a great little way to layer their hair out. So we're gonna take this crown area. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Once I have this crown area, let's isolate that. So we'll isolate this. Then I'm gonna take everything that I have here in the back, on both sides, okay, behind the ears, I'm going to isolate this. So we isolate this. Now once this is isolated, okay, let's isolate. And you can isolate this with clips. I'm gonna use the Sambia dry cutting clip. One clip up, and then I'm gonna take one clip down. Okay, because I'm going to cut this top crown area first. Now, let's talk about cutting. When you go back to the salon, you may choose to wear gloves, okay? It may be mandated to wear gloves in the salon. Do what's socially right within the collective group of your salon. Whether it's mandated, if it's not mandated, some of you may feel or your clients are gonna feel better if you're wearing gloves. Now, have you ever tried cutting with gloves? I would suggest you do it while you're at home. Practice with gloves. So here's some hot tips with gloves. Number one, drop a size smaller. Smaller size, drop one size down. The glove needs to fit nice and tight. Next hot tip, don't use, recommend not using latex gloves. They're too heavy, too bulky, and you're gonna sweat a lot in those gloves. Now once you have your gloves on, you've dropped a size smaller, listen to this hot tip. Excuse me for what I'm about to say. I want you to get those finger condoms. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? Give me a yes or a thumbs up or throw me some hearts if you know what I'm talking about. Finger condoms. Like when I would cut my hair, I'd put a Band-Aid and then I'd place a little finger condom over that. So it just kept the Band-Aid on nice and tight. But I want you to place that over your index finger, the hand that holds the hair, place that finger condom here and one here. Now this is after you've had your gloves on. Place it over that. Why are you doing that, Sam? Thanks for asking. You're doing that because that's gonna make this nice and tight and smooth. But I'm gonna encourage you, now remember, I'm not saying what's right or wrong, I'm just gonna try and give you some helpful tips to make it easier when you get back to the salon. I'm gonna suggest, you, okay, I have my shear to show you. I'm gonna suggest you don't go in and cut like this anymore. I'm gonna suggest you either scan, like I've been doing a lot, if you've been watching me live, as you've been off, I've been scanning a lot. Or I'm gonna suggest you point cut. So you're keeping the shear away from your glove. If you go in and you try to do this, I guarantee you're gonna be cutting that, that uh, finger condom or you're gonna be cutting that glove constantly all the time. So if this is helping you, give me a thumbs up, give me some yes, all right? All right, I can, may, I can maybe you need to hide something on your phone or computer. What's going on? Can you hear me, guys? Uh, Anne-Marie Quigley, I can. Maybe you need to hit something on your phone or computer. Are you talking to me, Laura? Can you guys hear me? Everybody hears me? Okay, everybody hears me, right? If you can hear me, give me a thumb up. Somebody give me a thumbs up. All right. So, Laura, I'm not sure what, if it's me or you were talking to someone else out there. All right. I th I'm pretty good. Yep. I got everybody going. All right. So, now. So, I'm talking about those gloves. So, all I'm trying to do is give you some helpful hints on those gloves. Okay. Next thing is this. Let's just talk about product application. All right. Have you ever tried to put product on with gloves? Number one, if they're not tight and you go and you run your hands through it, you're gonna be pulling on their hair, okay? So I recommend hit the gloves with diamond oil, okay? Redkins, you know, the whole idea of using oil, even your anti-frizz, the frizz dismiss, spray this on the gloves so there's some slip to the gloves. So as you're picking up their hair and you're cutting, that hair just glides in your gloves and you're not pulling that client. When you apply product, are you learning so far, guys? Okay, if, when you apply product, I want you to take the cap off because when you apply product from the container to the glove and you emulsify, it's not the same. The viscosity, you can't feel it. And then when you go to apply it, you get too much hair in one area, too much product in one area. So what I want you to do is just simply take the product, place it into the cap, and then take your blow dryer and blow dry the product. Then go in, take it, and put it in your gloves, emulsify. Now you're going to get nice, even, slippery, kind of uh, where it's emulsified, and it gives nice, even application. If you're learning something there, throw me some hearts. <laughs> I need some hearts. I've been working hard. <laughs> All right, so 
That's some things I want to talk about. Product application, working with the gloves. Now let's go through the haircut. Let's talk about the haircut, what I'm going to do. Okay, I want to create something a little bit more, get her back into some layers. Her layers have gotten long, but she said to me she likes it layered. She doesn't want it so thin and, and at the end, not so shaggy anymore, but she likes her volume and her layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to come through, and I'm going to start in the center back, right in this crown area. I'm going to take a vertical section to my pathy eye right now. Okay, now let's give you a back view of that section. Okay, that's the section I've taken right there. Okay, now I'm going to give you a side view of my elevation and the way that I'm going to take this in terms of how I'm going to elevate. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my comb there. See how it comes on off at the top and off at the bottom? That's exactly the angle I'm going to choose to cut, that angle. So I'm not going to cut round to the head. I'm going to cut that angle. And then remember what I said, point cut everything. So let's talk about that. I have, if you have gloves on and I go through, I'm just going to come through. I'm going to point cut, just notch it. Look at the angle of the shear. See how that took all that length off? Because if I go in, let's talk about something in the past. If I cut something blunt, now I've made it really blocked off. Now I'm working twice as hard to soften it. So why not just come in and chunk it? Now readjust your hand with your glove, okay? And remember, I've got finger condoms on the index finger and finger condoms on the right uh, middle, on the left middle finger. Left index, left middle, glove went on, Finger condoms went on. Now these are really tight, so I'm not cutting them, cutting into that glove. Okay, now watch. Now I'm going to come through, and now I'm going to point cut. I'm going to soften the line that I've been doing. I've been doing this a lot while I've been off on, and working on these live educational segments that I've been doing. Point cutting a lot. And I'm going to recommend that, guys, instead of being so much like this, you're going to cut the glove and then coming back and soften everything. All right, so now that's my first section. Now, the degree, degree of length you take this, that's going to be you and the client's choice. All right, questions so far? Yeah, sorry, yeah. I, uh, let's see, that's it. Em, Emily, I think. No, I'm sorry, Emily, I had no other way to kind of describe that to you. It's just a finger condom, I guess. I don't know. If anybody's got another name for it, you let me know. But it may not sound good, but let's just talk to each other right now. So, yeah, it's a finger condom. And what it does, once again, it controls your shear and your fingers working together. So, because I don't know if, you, if, you, if you've done it with a glove, it is not comfortable. So, one size small, drop a size smaller with a glove, nice and tight. Okay, then put your finger condoms on the hands that hold the hair. Then you've got nice and tight. Now let's give you a view of the back. All right, so this first section, I cut exactly where it lives. Okay, the next section, watch my combing. I'm going to clean, okay, and I don't want to over direct. Okay, so I'm going to push away from me. See what I just did? How I pushed away from me. If you're a one-sided comber and you continually do this, now I've over-directed towards me. I want to cut that next section right where it lives. So watch the spine of the comb. This is the spine of the comb. When that spine of the comb gets right to where that section lives, I come straight up. Now fold because we are dry cutting. So watch me fold. I'm going to fold, and you can see there's my guide. So now watch me lay it down to gravity so I'm not going in deep into my finger trying to cut it. Just lay it down. You're there with your elevation. Some, some things are changing, guys, in terms of the way we're going to work. So you're there with your elevation. Lay it down. Now watch Sam just notch, notch, notch. Look at the angle of the shear. That notched it for me. And look how far I weigh, I'm away if I was holding a glove. Now watch. Now I come back through. I readjust. Now watch my... Finger position, watch how it stays the same, but watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in, fan, soften, and point cut. And I'm working with the 7-inch dry cutting shear because I'm dry cutting, but look how deep I'm going in and softening this. So look how the hair, the shear stays parallel to the floor. And now watch me just open and close, start the motorboat up. Now just paddle through the water. Okay, but look at what I'm doing. See how I left the halo of length, but I softened that cutting edge. So the idea and the concept is so that this falls seamless. So I can almost read a newspaper through that in terms of how it's working. Okay. Uh, a f hashtag finger cut. Also finger frock or finger stall informally. Hashtag finger condom is a medical device used to cover one or more. Okay, great. So a finger cut or a finger frock. <laughs> oh, I love these names. Yep. Finger cots or finger cover. Oh, I like that. Finger cover. That's what I'm going to call it. 
Thank you. I learned something today. Every day, I learned something. A beautiful day starts with a beautiful mindset. Remember that before you walk into that salon because those people, are be, they're going to be walking in with anxiety. That's right, anxiety, and they're going to want to tell you everything. Focus on the intent and purpose of why they're there. All right, here we go. Now, look at what I'm doing. I'm just working with this back area, and I'm on the right side of her crowned area. And look at how, how my sections are pivoting. So my sections here, vertical, now pivot from that point, pivot from that point. And every section I'm cutting is not over-directed towards me to a stationary guide. I'm cutting it right where it lives, so my last combing angle must be on this side. So I push the hair away from me so that I stabilize that hair that's being cut from where it grows. Okay? How am I doing so far? Hi, Lauren. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jody. Hi, Sheena. <laughs> oh, Sheena, you guys call the finger condoms in hair school? Pretty cool school you went to, okay? I like finger cover. I'm going to stay with that one. All right, here we go. Okay, now watch. I'm going to fold, okay? Now look where I'm at. Now watch. Again, I drop it to gravity. Remember, I'm trying to share with you something, another approach in terms of should you desire or if it is mandated in your salon or by state board in your state to wear gloves, then I'm going to go in. If I had to do it, then I would be cutting this way. Now let's watch this. Watch. As I release this, make sure that that's falling very transparent. So it almost looks like you cut this with a um, razor. Dry cutting everything, and I kind of, uh, protecting the uh, co. Okay, yeah. I think a lot of times people are going to be dry cutting because you got to think. Some people are asking me a lot, Sam, what about blow drying the hair? What about the particles that are flying through the hair? Guys, this is what I mean by that phrase, socially right. Figure out what's going to make you feel safe. Figure out what's going to make the clients feel safe. Or what is the state board mandating in your particular state? I know in some salons they've mandated that they have to wear masks and they have to wear gloves. Okay, well then I want you walking around all day with a mask. You need to do that before you go into the salon. Don't do these things when you get to the salon. I want you to practice them now just like you've been probably practicing all these live educational things that you've been seeing. You've had an opportunity to practice some things and you're anxious to get back to the salon. I'm also going to suggest to get your team together at the salon and have a makeover day. Because I don't know about you, but I've been letting my hair grow until this is all over. And I'm, I'm dying to get it cut. But have a makeover day where everybody comes in the salon. No more than 10. I don't know. But my point is this. Have everybody come into the salon and you do each other's hair. But do it with the gloves. Do it with the mask. Whatever it is you're going to be wearing so you're practicing it. And then at the same time, share everything that you've been able to learn with everybody while you've been watching all this live education. And... Discuss what are the protocols. Help set up the salon with the, the uh, posters that are going to go up, the professional posters, not handwritten, that you're going to put up in terms of safety zone. Ma map out the salon. How's it going to look? What are you going to move around? Do it together as a team. I think that way when everybody comes in, they're set and ready to go. In other words, have a plan. And my good man Daniel Mason Jones has been talking about that a lot. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so I wouldn't mind paying the outrageous price. Noel, good. Hi, Kathy. Okay. Thank you, Plita. Okay, great. Nicole, glad you're enjoying the advice. Yes. Okay, I said in the beginning that this is meant with people coming in with clean, dry hair. Now, why did I say that? Because as I said, some people, some salons are not going to be blow-drying hair. They're going to either socially decide that's socially right for that salon, or maybe a state's going to mandate that. Guys, I don't know. I'm just the messenger giving you messages and hopefully giving you hot tips that are going to help you counter that if it happens. So I would suggest that what you're doing is you're sending out blow-dry videos to your clients and you're telling them, I need you to come in with your hair blow-dry. Let me say this. I know a salon that's done it. They're doing it. Their stylists are responsible for sending their clients a blow-dry video on how to blow-dry their hair before they come in and they're cutting their hair. Why? Because they want them to get right to work and it's saving time. It saves them time. Remember, your, your revenue, guys, I'm just going to be really transparent here. Your revenue is not going to be what it used to be. It's going to drop, but the tips are going to go up. But what you need to do is understand how can I maximize my time and get as many clients I am, as I can with what's socially right through social distancing. So a lot of salons are saying, clients, you need to come in with your hair dry because they're doing a lot of dry cutting to save them time. And no, don't discount. As far as I'm concerned, the, the, one of the great 
people I know, uh, Van Council said, hey, the blow dry has been free all the time, you know, in terms of the way he chooses to operate. So it's just a matter. If it's all a cart, then then you're just charging for the haircut. It's all about what you, what's your protocol? I don't know, but I'm just giving you ideas. Continually checking every time I cut a section. I just want to make sure I can read a newspaper through that. Okay. Hi, LA. What's up, Denise? Okay. Sheena, how are you? Okay. Glad you're enjoying the tips. Yes, Catherine, can we flat iron then cut? Hey, I would flat iron. Remember what they say about heat, what it does if there's any COVID going on. I'm just saying, just saying. Don't take it personal, please. But flat iron, yeah, I flat ironed this before I began. And I just swiped it once just to get all the crinkles out when I dry cut. If I don't get the crinkles out and get it smooth, then what's going to happen is the hair is going to move when I cut it. Natural movement might take place. You're going to think it's too heavy in that area. You're going to go in, pick it up, and point cut some more when it's really just the blow dry. Some of you that have been in my hands on classes, we've talked about that. Hey, Sam, don't you have a great blow dry video on record? <laughs> Andrea, go to Sam via YouTube. I think Andrew did do one that's pretty cool that maybe you could send to the clients. Maybe that's something you want to do. But I think you guys are you're getting my point in terms of, you know, choose whether you, are you going to ask you need to ask yourself, am I going to blow dry or am I not going to blow dry? That's going to be your professional choice based on what you feel or this team at the salon feels is socially right. I can't answer that question for you guys. Remember, I'm just a messenger, just giving you the ideas and just talking to you transparent in regards to things that I've been talking to people about. I go find it out, find out the salons that have already opened. I've been reaching out to them, find what's working, what's not. And another thing that's not working is the mask. You know, if you're going to be wearing masks, some are going to choose and some are not. I'm not here to say wear a mask, guys. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is this, is that what's going to take place is if you wear a mask, they've dis some salons are discovering the one that's like really like a gas mask with a little nose thing, the whole bit. That's not working because when they move their head to talk, the mask doesn't move. Now they got to bring their hands back up and fix their mask. The mask that works from what salons are telling me is the one that has the elastic that goes over the ears. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, what's Sam? What am I going to do when I color it? I got to take the, the, the elastic off. I want you to preset your masks for clients if you're offering them mask or maybe they're, they're coming in with their own mask. But use double-sided tape. Have them place double-sided tape inside the mask or you place it inside the mask when you hand them one, it's already done. And when you put it on, that double-sided tape will stick Take the elastic off and now you can just go in and do the color then put the elastic back on. This way, because if you take the mask off, now the client's holding it with their hands or now the hands are up by the face, that whole kind of thing. Remember guys, the more genuine concern you show for the client or the more genuine concern you can show, show about their safety, how sanitized you are, the more comfortable they're going to feel, the more relaxed they're going to feel. Once again, just giving you ideas. All right, I'm moving off to the opposite side. Now, notice how I'm choosing to stay on the same side when I'm cutting this. So now, instead of me combing away from me, because the section I'm cutting is on this side, I'm going to comb, my last combing angle is going to be towards me. And then as soon as I hit that line over, my finger position is over, look how I fold. Always looking to see where that guide is. Now, look at the angle of the shear. Notch, 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 notch. Okay, now if you're one that cuts really like you're a blender, uh, I really recommend you open up your mindset and start point cutting things. Number one, it gives the haircut longevity. Number two, it makes your haircut a little bit more seamless. You're not going to find you're over texturizing so much towards the end of a haircut. Okay, let's go through. Now you can see that. Now let's go to the front. So remember, all I did was vertical sections. Okay, but I pivoted these vertical sections and worked around the back. My elevation, let's give you a profile view of that. My elevation was here, okay? Then when I went in to cut, my finger angle was there to the shape of the head. You determine how long this is. It could be that long if you wanted to, based upon the proportional length the client has. Then what we did is we went in there, we knocked it off, then we went back through, readjusted our hand, and we went in deep. I'm using a longer blade, the seven inch dry cutter, because I want to get in deep to soften this edge to make it transparent, so I could actually read a newspaper through it. Okay, let's see if there's any questions. Uh, they said you need to take your mask off at least every three quarter hours. Breathing your COT for that long can make you sick. Cool. I think that's probably, I've heard about that. So this is great. This is what, these things are great. We share things with each other and get hot tips with each other. So every, maybe between every client, you're taking it off. I recommend you don't take it off in front of the client. 
I recommend if you're going to take it off, go to the back room and take it off, refreshing yourself up and come back out. I, I just think that that's going to be just visually, you're setting a good visual statement from the client when they're looking at you. Okay. Ask them to be wearing a disposable ear loop mask upon entry. Oh, good. I like that. See, there we go. Awesome. Okay. Somebody's asking about the length up here in terms of length. That's the length you're going to decide. You have to decide, you know, how expressive do you want to get with this layer up on top here? You know, I would suggest, you know, if you got to base it on the personality of the client, you know, if she was inked and her arms, I mean, she was inked and she's maybe 20, 19, I'd be taking this probably down another two inches. So it had a little bit more pop to it. So base that on the uh, client. Sam, is there any helpful way you can gauge on how a, a client in terms of how cu they cut it? I would ask them if they use a round brush if they blow dry it, when they blow dry it. If they use, she says, I use a medium round brush like this, then I would grab this hair, okay? Then I would come through, put the round brush there, wrap the hair around it, and then that's how long I would cut it. Why? So she can get her favorite round brush around that when she gets home and she wants to dry it. Okay? I hope these things are helping you out. Let's see if I got some questions here. I got to look over my glasses. Aaron, if you cut yourself when point cutting, you are probably closing this year too soon. Try. Okay, excellent. Let's talk about an exercise. All right. When you're at home, grab the gloves, put them on, put your finger covers on your index and your middle finger, and now just pra start practicing. So number one, get the comb out of the way. Watch what Sam's going to do. If I'm cutting, I'll just pick up a section and show you. If I'm going to cut this and the comb gets in my way, when you point cut, you don't want to hit your comb. Okay. So what I'm going to suggest is take the comb, hit the pad of your pocket of your thumb and index finger, and now look at my comb. It's completely out of the way. Okay, that's a nice little hot tip there. So sometimes what you need to do is just be aware of these simple little things, okay? Okay, okay. Oh, you're more than welcome, Rosalina. You're more than welcome, my dear. All right, let's continue to keep going. I'm on this left side, cutting the left side. Stay in control with your sectioning on this dry cutting. Bad Sam, didn't clip that off. All right, here's my back left crown area. Notice, once again, I'm staying on the same side, okay? Now remember, I, this is like a client that's come in, She's loved the way it grew out. She wants to keep a little more length, but she's asking for her layers to be just slightly longer and not to be so shaggy at the bottom. She likes that way. This is a great way to approach it. All right. Once again, how? Look at the shear. It opens and closes. It stays still. Once I start to move the shear, you change the angle of the shear. Now you're just taking off length. I've already adjusted the length where I want. Now let's soften that notched edge that I created. So look how the fan moves to me. So Sam, how do you make a fan? Basically the way you're gonna make it is this. You put your hand here, you're holding the hair, put your thumb right at your bottom knuckle there and now just fist it and you're in a fanned position. All right, here we go. I need to look and see, there's my guide. What, what, what are you doing, Sam? I just felt it was too long. I could feel it was too long. So what happened? Well, I slid past my guide. So even though I'm notching and point cutting, I want you to remember balance and function are the key things in a haircut. But balance and function happen by simply following your guideline, the guideline that you establish. All right, let's see if there's any more here. Um, it's in short layer. They ask for long hair in short layers. Sometimes they do do that. So you just go shorter, but make sure you're really, really going in and softening this edge if it's longer hair. If somebody wants it this short and their hair is this long, for me, proportion, that proportion is off. But it's not about me. It's about what they desire to have. So somehow you got to figure out how do I get a visual, not technical, a visual blend from that degree of shortness to the extreme length that they have. That way it's going to look a little bit more pleasing to the eye, especially the professional eye. All right, here we go through now. Watch. When you dry cut, fold this hair so you can see your guide. See my guide? Okay. When I see my guide, now I come through and I notch to the guide. Look at the angle of the shear. Okay. Now I come back, readjust and comb. Look how I comb. Hold, comb, hold. Now I'm ready to cut. Okay, here, up. Now look at my how deep my hand is. And I set the shear up. Let's give you a view here. And I set the shear up and I move. Hey, Marie, how's the beach? Give me a thumbs up. I hope it's sunny where you're at, my dear. So here we go, there. All right, now watch. Let's make sure I can read through that. Yes, now let's take the back down. Well, before I take the back down, 
No, I, no, let's not do it yet. I want you to see what I'm going to do the front. No, I'm going to show you the back. <laughs> it's just been one of those days. All right, here we go. Let's take it down. Okay. Now watch. If I don't feel I have a good visual blend here, I'll come back in and take some of this some of this length off. But watch. When I comb through that, look how there's no lines in that. Can you see? There's no. There's not a hard line. It just looks like it's like barely has any layers in it, yet when I tickle this and I touch it, look at that sense of volume that I start to get out of that. So I'll give you a little trick if you want to go through and you want to get a little bit more blend on this, I'll show you how to do that. Really cool. Very, very simple. All right, let's click back that back area now and let's go after this front area. Okay. Now the front area, I'm going to approach a little bit differently. I want to get an angle in here, and it's okay for me if it steps back a little bit and then it comes back down. I'm going to show you a cool way to do that. We're going to take our crown area that we just cut, this crown area, and we're going to use that as our guide. Okay, I'm going to start here in the front. I'll give you a front view of her. How's the beach, Marie? <laughs> give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying yourself out there. I wish I was out there. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to come through. I'm going to take a vertical section, okay? right down that middle part. So I've taken some of the left side of the middle part and some of the right side. Now I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna lift this back up and I'm gonna use this back piece right here. That's my guide. Now I'm gonna cut this to the shape of the head. So I'm gonna kind of round this, this section out. There's my guide in the back. Now watch me notch to that guide. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and readjust. Okay, and point cut. Notice that shear stays still. Look at the fan move. Okay, it's just a great way to ensure I keep the halo of length but release the softness inside. Now, let's give you a, pro a profile view of this sectioning. Okay, now watch the sectioning. It was vertical, but now as I come down, it's going to stay horizontal. See that? So now I'm here, vertical to the path of my eye. If you were looking at first section, it's horizontal to the path of your eye. So let's just take it and keep it parallel. Now, let's over direct everything here to the center. Okay, so I'll give you a front view of this so you can see. But everything is over directed to that front center. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to maintain some length, but I'm going to have a little bit of back and then it's going to drop. Watch, you'll see. Okay, here. And then look how I'm dry cutting, how I'm holding this. Look how I kind of weave it in between my fingers. I like doing that, especially with gloves, you might doing that. You're going to get a nice even tension out of that by doing that. Okay, so here, now up, so I'm over directing center, look for the guide, there it is there, turn, so you can take the length off, notch, okay, now watch how I come back in, and how I will come back in, look, watch how I'll move, and point cut. Okay, now another thing that I've been doing a lot is scanning, and scanning is another technique of point cutting, but it gives me a little bit more weight to it when you scan. Allow me to show you how to scan, okay, and give you a front view again. Look where I'm combing everything to the center. Now watch, when the spine gets to the center, hold still for me, Lydia, okay, right to the center of her nose, boom, that comb comes up. That guarantees I'm maintaining consistency in my combing. If there's any tool that gets us in trouble, it is the comb. It's not that you change your elevation so much, your finger angle or your um, over direction. That could be. I would always check those three movements. But a lot of times it's where we comb the hair to. Like it would be so easy for me because I'm over directing and elevating everything to one position to over comb. And now look where I'm at. I'm past that center mark where I need to be is that center mark. So I just made that last section longer. Sam, what? I noticed that every time you go back in, you're cutting, recutting, you're point cutting everything that you've already cut. How many of you out there were thinking that? Yes. So I'm just giving it that extra softness. That's all I'm simply doing is giving it that extra softness. Let's take a look at this, uh, the sectioning. Sam, you've got bigger hands than most of us. <laughs> what should you use smaller hands? Do we, we can't hold that much hair? Okay, good question. And what I would imagine you're talking about is the width of this section. The thickness of the section, no matter how small your hand is, you can control it by simply overlapping your fingers. Look how I'm overlapping my fingers. See, that gives me more tension. Watch this. When I do this, look at my poor hands. There's an air pocket there. So watch me close that air pocket down by simply overlapping. So now overlap, but watch. If this is too wide, divide this in half and take only what you can handle in the length of your hand. See that? Then 
Continue the line, some of the line, and pick up the rest of the width of that section in your hand. So if this is too wide for your hand from front to back to the hairline, just pick up half of it, then pick up the other half. But the important thing is what's the line you're going to cut? What I don't want you to do is cut this line and then the second half you're up here cutting it. Make sure that they're blended all the way through. Did that help you out, okay? With small hands, hope that helps out. Now watch this, what's so cool, so cool about this? Look at the angle I'm getting out of that by simply just doing it this way. I'm getting a beautiful angle out of that that's soft. And if you're concerned about the length, let's just go through and see what happens. So Sam, what? What if you wanted more length? What would you be doing if their hair was longer? Then watch what I do. I just understand the principles of movement. Okay. Then I'm going to elevate more to the opposite side. I'm going to sometimes take it out of its natural fall, move it in a side to side position. I'm going to over direct, but I'm going to over elevate. So the longer the it gets longer because this is where this hair lives. And if I pull way, elevate way out over here, look how much longer the length that I've given that. So think about, guys, in terms of what's the length, what length do you desire, that's going to determine where you're combing this hair to. I hope that helps you out. Okay, here we go through. Look at, the, look at the guide. I can see the guide now. Okay, let me get my hand right. I'm good. And notch. Stabilize. What I don't want you to do is go in and do this. So let's talk about an exercise. If you feel, oh, God, Sam, I can't point cut and I'm going to cut myself. All right, here's what I want you to do. First, what you're going to do is you're going to go in and you're going to put your glove on with your finger covers. Okay, if you choose to wear gloves, or if you choose not to wear gloves, this is still a great exercise. Use the comb. So the comb is your scissor, okay? Pretend it's your shear. So you're gonna touch, close. So I say, touch, close, touch, close, touch, close. So I'm building memory muscle. Touch, close, touch, close, touch, close. I never close on the way in. Let's take the shear now, okay? So watch me. So I'm here, look at this. I'm I open, I'm open because I'm going to cut, but I touch and I close on the way out. Touch, close on the way out. Touch, close on the way out. Do not close on the way in. You're going to be cutting your fingers. You're going to be cutting your gloves. So now just practice that, guys. I practiced that over and over. There was a video that Andrew put out. I thought it was great. It was all about parting. Just grabbing a mannequin and just practicing your parting and clean partings. Even though you're going to go in and do something like this, clean partings are essential. All right, so we come through. Now watch my last section now. Let's see, let's see what happens with this length. Okay, I'm here. I come through. I'm looking for my guide. There's my guide. I see it. Turn. Lay it down with gravity. Let's come through notch. Now watch this time. If Stevie Wonder can play that piano without seeing somebody going, who's Stevie Wonder? <laughs> Google him, okay, he's a blind pianist, he's awesome, okay, watch. So I touch on the way out, I close and touch on the way out, my eyes are closed. So see how I'm not cutting myself, guys. Now this takes years and years of practice. So it's experience, experience, experience. If there's any students out there, I hope you've been picking up a comb and just sitting on the sofa and just doing this with no shear in your hand. White, fine teeth, white teeth, fine teeth, white teeth, fine teeth. It comes with experience. Okay, now watch, take a look at this. Watch how great, at the same time, look at how I was able to get an angle. Do you see that angle in there, how that angle just drops off? But what I love is this is a very textured line already because I didn't take an angle back, pull it forward, cut a blunt line into that. Give me a front view of that angle. Look how I'm just turning her slowly so you can see that. So this is what's so cool about, think about ways that are gonna make your, get to the end result, and please don't take this wrong, in a shorter period of time without sacrificing quality. You don't want to sacrifice quality, you want, but you want to maximize your time, guys. Remember, time is going to be an issue when we get back. And the reason being is because you're not going to be able to so much maybe to triple book. I don't know, maybe double book. I don't know, maybe. But I, I, you just the revenue is going to go down. So start thinking about how can I get more clients in and still be socially right and be able to get to the end result. We talked about having them come in with their hair blow dry, their responsibility. We've talked about going in and, and finding techniques and ways that you can get to the end result. If you watch Sam over the years, I've taught you how to cut a bob by simply elevating vertically and compressing that nape area. Then you get your bob immediately. Then you come back in and you're going through it. Now on this exercise, <laughs> hi, on this exercise, I'm going to step to the opposite side. And I'm a step to the opposite side because it's much more comfortable for me to be on this side when I'm doing this particular front area. In the back area, I stayed on the same side, okay? Oh, gosh, guess what? 
My phone battery is going low. So I got to go get a, a, my cord. I can't find it in my studio. All right. Nobody leave. Somebody text in there. He went to get his, his cord for his phone. Keep texting that. Keep putting it right there. Put it right there. I'm going to go get it really quick. Be right back. Don't move. Stay there. Stay there. Okay, you still there? Did somebody say, he just went to look at his phone cord, his battery's going low. You would think I'd be a professional and know this as much as I do this. All right, here we go, all right. There we go, okay, that's good. All right, get some charge, some battery, and we're good to go. Hey guys, I'm not, I, I make mistakes too. <laughs> but it's never a mistake if I learn from this. I won't ever let that happen again. Okay, I'm back. All right, here we are. All right, now I'm on my, uh, up, uh, right side, so I stand on her left side when I cut that. Why, Sam? It makes it easier because I'm over-directing everything to a stationary guide. And I find when I do that, I've discovered it just makes it a lot easier to maintain the consistency of my line. All right, let's go through. Yes, ma'am, this is the side you've been cutting into, isn't it? I could tell right away when I saw that section. So I want you to understand, in this particular appointment, I'm not, not going to get the true blend in there, even though we're point cutting it to give you a nice soft edge. But I want you to make sure you keep your hands out of your hair. Remember, the doctor doesn't do his own surgery, okay? So, how'd I do? <laughs> All right, here we go. I know, some of them have cut their hair, Sam, and it's like, I know, guys, I know. You're in for an experience when we get back. All right, there's my guy. See, this is some of that hair that she's cut into. All right, let's go through. Look, I can notch. See how I can notch? I'll give it to you this way. All right, now watch how I'm gonna get that here where it needs to be, and now watch how I'm gonna come through, and look how I come through, now I'm going to fan. Now watch how I'm fanning, look. Shear always stays stable, just fan and move the fan to that shear, okay? I visually see a lot of weight. If you hold it this way, if watch this. You hold it this way and you don't fan, you see a lot of weight there. Sometimes I used to get too aggressive then I learned how to fan, and now it told me not to get so, so aggressive, maybe get aggressive where I see a little bit more weight. So where you see the transparency, that's negative space. Where you see the weight, that's positive space, okay? So make sure you get a balance of positive and negative. And that's why, if you notice, when I was bringing them down, I was checking those sections to see how I was doing in regards to that, all right? Yes, ma'am, you, you, you must be right-handed. The reason I say that is because you cut the right side first. Yes, you are right-handed. All right, so now let's just come back through and let's fan. All right, any questions out there, guys? How are we doing? If I'm doing, giving you some good, valuable information, just get throw me a thumbs up, okay? All right, who said that? Ah, uh, Carolyn, listen, my dear, I'm glad that you needed this today. I'm glad that we're here. Salon Centric is here for you and Sam is here for you. All right, so let's go through. Let's fan this last section. Now watch the shape that I ended up with. And maybe you might want to go in and say, you know what, Sam, that doesn't visually look right to me in the back. It seems like she's too thick down below. Well, that's where you go back in and you readjust. Now look at the angle. Look at that. Look how I got that really easy. Excuse me? This is in your eyes and you don't want it to be in your eyes. But you like it long, long you want to go one side. <laughs> see, that's what's going to happen. You're going to see that, guys, in terms of, I like my hair where it's at, Sam, but can you get it out of my eyes? Never fear, Sammy is here. Yes, we can. So let's say she goes this way. Now, let's take a look at what I've created here so far. And then I'll show you some hot little tips on how to keep that out of her eyes. All right, now remember, I blow dried this. I chose to cut it dry. Look at what I just created. Let's comb through that. So you can see there's no hard lines there, guys, in terms of what I just did. Okay, just really cool in terms of how this works. Let's just see this over here. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Did you think I fell? <laughs> oh, welcome to the comedy show. All right, here we go. All right. Hey, come on now. Cooperate today. You're usually very good. All right, let's fix that. All right, here we go. All right. Ha! <laughs> that deserves a big laugh, right? All right, all right, here we go. Now watch. So I've got a couple things I want to do. I want to get this to stay over there so it doesn't fall in her eyes. Then what I want to show you is this. Check out this. Look how soft that is. 
Can you see how soft that is and how it just has a nice ca common tendency to float? And I haven't really texturized it aside from just deep point cutting into it and point cutting into that. So now let's go to the back, okay? And let's look at this back. Some people are going to say, God, this seems so fat and so weighty down here. It's so heavy. Look when I tickle it. You can see how it just moves with a lot of weight. All right, so let's go to a razor. Yes, let's move to a razor. Change my blade. I believe in changing the blade anytime I use a razor, whether I use it on just the fringe or whether I use it on an entire haircut, the blade is changed. Okay, bad experiences can happen with blades because they're not changed, with a razor because they're not changed. And uh, Vivian McKinder taught me, and she said the emotion, razor has an emotional tool, meaning the more emotion you hold it with, you're going to be damaging that hair. And I was talking to her today, and we were talking about, I told her I learned this from you, this whole emotion of a razor. So let's go with a cool technique here. Let me show you a couple things with a razor. I'm going to suggest a razor you might be picking it up a little bit more. Why? Because it's, imagine what a razor does. This isn't about what tool you like or what tool is your favorite, guys. This is about what are their needs, okay? Remember, when we work with a razor, what it does is it just slices out that hair. It makes it more pliable. It makes it more responsive. If I block off the edge, it makes it more heavy. So what's the end result that you're looking for? What's the texture you're w working with? Fashion designers, they understand the limits and capabilities of silk and wool. So we have to understand the limits and capabilities of fine hair, of natural curly hair, of thick, dense Asian hair. So it's really important you understand what tools are for. So I want to take weight out here. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come through and I'm going to work more vertically. Okay, and just take out weight. So I look and see, there's where that edge is. Look at my hand slide into that. Okay, now I comb through this. Now all I'm going to do is just simply take the razor and I'm just going to start to paint out. And I just paint that out. Just paint out the amount of weight and length so that now when I tickle this, look at that response that I get just out of that one slice there. So I'm creating more of a visual blend, not so much a technical blend. I'm looking more for the hair to respond, to be responsive, not to just collapse with weight. And when you do these kind of detached haircuts up here and you have maintained length, sometimes you just got to come in and understand that texture is a visual exercise. It's a feel. It's all visual and feel. There's just no way I can cross chest check texture. Watch my comb. It's in my way. Remember, hit the pocket of your thumb and index and now squeeze the thumb and you've got it. Now all I'm doing is I'm just very lightly taking this. Now some of you out there might go, oh my gosh, I can't believe he is using a razor on dry hair. Listen, I understand the tools. I understand the how, the why, and the when behind the tool. But rules are made to be broken. That's why we have prisons. Yet, I'm using this to give it more longevity. So if you're concerned about what you're doing to the cuticle, it's because the angle of the blade is not right and you have too much pressure in your hand. So you're ripping at the hair. If you have concern about that, pick up Redken One United, one of my faves, pick this one up, and I want you to come through and just mist all of this. Mist from a distance, okay? So you don't get that so wet, but you're giving it a buffer, if you will. And I say from a distance because I talk about hairsprays and I, type, I love Triple Pure 32, neutral fragrance. So I'm using the can to determine the distance in terms of teaching clients. This is how far you should be when you spray your hairspray. The reason you don't like it is you're spraying too close and you feel it's too crunchy. No crunch. You feel it's too crunchy, too wet, etc. It's about teaching the clients. So I want you to be loaded with hot little tips when you go back to the salon because that's what's going to hold the, maintain the clientele you have. And I guarantee you, people are going to be moving around looking for the right salon that they feel is socially right and the right hairdresser that respects their genuine concern about what's going on. Does that make sense, guys? So important. So this is an opportunity for not only you to hold on, but build a clientele, especially those people that have been looking to build a clientele. I know some salons are getting ready to open, reopen. They just opened prior to COVID, and now they're going to open. And I suggest open with a good, so what's socially right? That's, I keep saying that phrase because it's so important you understand that. Notice when I tickle, look at the response I'm getting now, that back now. Are you learning something here, guys? Okay, any questions? You're, oh, thank you very much, Donna. Okay, good. I'm glad this is all making sense. Good job. All right, here we go. Now, then the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, education. Thank you so much for joining Salon Centric today and myself. I think education, education. As a hairdresser, 
As a teacher, I must never cease to learn. As a hairdresser, we must never cease to learn. There's always something out there to learn. But it's how you take it. I'm not here to say what's right and wrong. And you will never find my team at San Villa saying that it has to be done this way. No. What we want to do is just give you the information. You determine what's going to work for you. What's right for you. You know, what's, what, we don't want to affect your belief system. I want to enhance your belief system. And maybe give you other ways to think of doing things. So once again, you maximize your time behind the chair. Because I for, believe that's where the professional world is going. It's going to be all about maximizing our time behind the chair. Okay? So just going through and watch how I'm going to apply my product after I'm done. Okay? And that's basically what I want to do right there. Now watch. You can even take this concept to the front. So watch how I'll take this to the front area for you in terms of what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to start to put some closure on our little class today. Watch. Oh, hold your head still, my dear member, Lydia. The more you move, the more mistakes I make. So it's important you hold your head still for me. Now watch this one. So I want to take the weight. Look at the weight I see right here. Okay? So I'm going to take that weight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb. Okay? Get rid of the comb. Place the angle of the blade at a 45, which is why I gave it so it rotates. Come back through. I'm going to rotate at 45. I'm just going to slow, lightly close my hand over that. So I lightly close over that. Now I just lightly slide out. So now look at this section, how I've taken the weight out of that section. Okay, now if you feel like you're going to pull the hair, just spray your one United, Redken One United, just spray this on there, and you'll find that that'll give you a little bit more slip on that. So the reason is that just felt heavy, and now what I want is I want this side just to have that floating ability to it in terms of the way it floats. Okay, last thing now, let's go through that fringe and let's make this have some some control for it so it doesn't fall out of the eyes. Okay, this trick I'm gonna show you guys, great trick, use this on your bobs. I highly recommend you use it on your bobs. So bob one length, they want some volume, they're looking for something a little bit differently, great way to do it. Now I want this to move over and stay there. Look at how it falls. Okay, so let's take a diagonal forward section. This has become a classical technique. I love it in terms of how it works. So I know that if I cut short too long, that's going to make that hair move in that direction. So I'm going to weave it in just like a highlight, short to long, open and close and backstroke that. Okay. So all I'm doing is taking out weight. When they say it falls their eyes, it's not necessarily the length. It is gravity and the weight that are taking over. So all I'm doing is taking out a diagonal line of gravity. I open and close and push back. Sam, why do you push back? I push back so that I'm cutting not on the same, not a same line. If I push back, the hair moves back. Some of that length moves back. Now I'm cutting on the same spot, but it is never the same line. Now watch what I mean. Diagonal, short, too long. You control what you weave. How much do you weave, Sam? That's how much density do you want to take out. Now notice how that has a tangle to it. Watch, if you follow me, I taught you how to get tangles out vertical with a brush. Same thing with a comb. Come in, get the tangles out. Anytime you have tangles, go in. Now watch, look how the comb just floats through. Now watch this section. Watch how that is not, it's now starting to expose that eye. And I'm not forcing that so much to stay back. So if you had a one length bob and they say, can I get a little more volume up here, Sam? Do this on the top, weave it and just close, backstroke and close on that. And it's just a great way to take care of it. Okay, last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna apply my product, okay? And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna apply my Rough Paste, Redkin's Rough Paste 12. I'm actually going to take a cap of another product, watch this now. Remember what I talked about, gloves, it's just impossible, guys. Because you, if you emulsify with gloves, you're not gonna feel the viscosity in that. So I go through, pick up a blow dryer, okay? Excuse, excuse the blow drying sound, excuse it. But here's what I wanna do. I got it on high heat, and all I wanna do is just melt that down. So melt it down. Why are you showing us this, Sam? Because with gloves, you're not gonna feel the, you're not gonna be able to emulsify evenly or feel the viscosity of the client, of the product. So I want you to just come through and just blow dry this inside. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you in a moment. Oh! Okay, look at how shiny I've made that, okay? Now, come through, pick up your product, and now watch how easy with gloves, sorry I don't have gloves on, I should've probably done the whole thing with gloves, bad me. 
Okay, now watch. Now I emulsify, and look how quickly I can get that to just the viscosity, and how I get, now I can have an even application in regards to this. Just making an even application. So I just wanted to share that trick with you in terms of how do I apply glove, because one of the salons was telling me, they said, Sam, applying product was just a disaster. And then going in and blow drying, I was getting the, too much product, or too much product, focus of product in an area. And I think that's just something that you have to be aware of in terms of the fact that you're wearing gloves. Normally you don't. So just be aware. Okay, did you learn something here, guys, today with Salon Centric and being in Sam's studio, makeup studio, living room, whatever you want to call it. Any questions? Uh, you're welcome, Jenny. I'm glad that you got something out of this, my dear, while you're spending your time. I value your time, my friends. I really do, especially at a time like this. And I think it's so important, my friends, that we overprotect and not overact. I know that we will come, through, come out through this united. My hope is that there are no borders between salon owners, employers, rental, independent, session stylists, educators, platform artists, influencers, that we are all hairdressers and we all respect each other and we all support each other. That's my hope because there's borders. Let's break those borders down and come out of this supporting each other and keep things positive, my guys. Let's think before we push that button on post. Ask yourself, T, is it true what you're about to post? H, is it really happening or are you making it up? I, is it inspiring? N, is it really necessary to push that post button based on what you're saying? And then lastly and most important, what you're about to post, is it kind? So T-H-I-N-K, think before we post. Who loves you? Salon Centric. Who else loves you? Sam Via. Thank you so much for your time. And I know our paths will cross again when we see each other at a show. My heart will go on my hand. My hand will go on my heart. That's me giving you a personal, personal hug. Love you guys. Thank you for your support. Where can you get your products? Make sure you, your SSC, when they come in, they don't have anything to sell you, my friends. They got something to tell you. They care about you. Support your SSC. And the other thing is tools. You can get your tools from your sales consultant. And I also want you to remember, have two sets of tools, tray A and tray B. So your clients take you seriously in terms of how you're sanitizing. And then the last tip is use a mesh bag. Have it on your station, maybe hanging there. As you use a brush, you're done with it, it goes in that mesh bag. As you use a comb, it goes in that mesh bag. And it has, that mesh bag has a tag with your name in it, on it, or it's a color of, of plastic or something that codes it, it's yours. The sanitizing person, if you have one in the salon, comes on, picks up your mesh bag from that client, dumps, dumps it in the barberside bowl, Ben, that's right, and now you've got your new bag, Tray B. Now you're going to work with Tray B. But now your tools are in there. Now they come back out, sanitizing person laying them out on your next tray, boom, they're ready to go. So think like a dentist, always uh, making things and switching things. Now, once again, I'm not here to say what's right or wrong. I'm just giving you ideas in terms of how you can make your environment socially right, how you can make the client feel comfortable, and how you can protect yourselves. Love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. God bless. Talk to you soon.